What is up you guys? So today we're going to go over a problem called min stack. This problem is asked at many tech companies. So if we go down here, we can see it's asked at Amazon, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Apple, a bunch of tech companies. So before I get into it, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you like this type of content, I post multiple times a week. So without further ado, let's get into it. The description says, design a stack that supports push, pop, top, and retrieving the minimum element in constant time. So we have a push function, which will push an element X onto the stack, a pop function that will remove the element on the top of the stack, a top function, which gets the top element, and then this is kind of the unique part of this problem. We have to get the minimum element, which will retrieve the minimum element in the stack. So I'm going to go over a quick example, as well as go over a common pitfall for this problem. So let's say we were adding elements into our stack. Let's say we first added in five. A common pitfall is people make the assumption that you need to keep track of the minimum using a single variable. So let's say we had a variable called min. Right now, our min would be set to five since it's the only element that we have. And then as we are adding elements into the stack, you simply keep track of the minimum element. So I'll show you why this doesn't work. Let's say I added seven, seven is greater than five, we keep it. Let's say we add two, now two gets added or set to min, right? But now what if we pop two? So if we remove two now, this is no longer our minimum element. Five is uh, now becomes our minimum element, but we already overwrote this five with the two. So that is why this solution would not work. And it's a very common approach that people come up with, but doesn't actually solve the problem. Now let's go over the actual solution to solve this problem. So let's say we had our stack and let's call this stack S. The way we're going to solve this problem is we need a second stack that will keep track of the minimum elements that we've seen up to that point. So we'll have another stack and we can just call it stack T. And whenever we add into stack S, we're going to add the minimum element into stack T. So I'll show you that what that looks like. Let's say we were to add in the number five into stack S. Right now, number five is the only element that we have. So this needs to be added into our T stack as well. Now let's add the seven, like we did in the previous example. Five is still our minimum element. So we are checking the very top of stack T, which is five, right? Five, but that is still less than the number that just came in, which is seven, right? So we need to add in five again because this second element when we got to the second element five is still our minimum element up to that point so we add in another five and let's say we add in two we're gonna check the top of the stack on t and compare it with the number that we just put in stack s obviously two is less than five so that means we're now gonna add two into stack t and let's do one more. We add in a number three. We compare with the top of the stack of T. This two is less than three, so that means we need to add two into our stack T. And so now we can retrieve all of the minimum elements in constant time. So if we were to say, hey, what's the minimum element at this current point? We know it's two. But let's say we were to pop from our stack, we want to make sure that we pop from both stacks. So we would remove the top element from S and the top element from T. And so now if we were to say, hey, what is the minimum element right now? It is still the number two because we have five, seven, and two. And we can repeat this process over and over again. We've made sure that at every step we know the minimum element. So let's implement the code for this solution. We're going to need two different stacks, right? So we can say private stack of integers, and we can call it stack S. And let's create another stack T. 
and inside of our constructor, we can initialize both of these stacks. So the first thing is finishing the push method. We know that we need to add in whatever comes in this push method to s, no matter what. So we can just say s dot push x, right? But we need to make sure that we're adding in the correct value to t, whatever the minimum element is up to that point. And so to determine that, we need to peak from the top of stack t and compare with x. But another edge case we have to consider is what if our stack t is empty, which the first time that we attempt to push an element onto our stack, stack t will be empty. So we can't peak if there's no elements. So we have to have an extra edge case there. So let's extract what the minimum ele element will be. So we can say int min, and we can say if t is empty or x is less than t.peak, right? If that is the case, then x is our minimum element. Otherwise, it'll just be t.peak. So let's go over what this is doing. If t is empty, we know we can just accept x as our minimum element. Or if t is not empty and x is less than our top element in t, then we can also say x is our minimum element. If both of these conditions are not true, then we just take whatever is in the top of the stack. And now all we need to do is add in this minimum element into our t stack. So we can say t.push min. And that's it for the push function. Now for pop, just like how I said, whenever we pop from s, we need to make sure that we pop from t. So we can say s.pop and t.pop. For the top function, we want to return the last element in our s stack. So to do that, we can just say return s.peak, get the last element. And then to get the minimum element, we're going to peak on stack t. So we can say return t.peak. And that's it. As you can see, it's not a lot of code. It's just coming up with the idea to keep track of minimum numbers at every step. So let's just make sure that this code works. Cool. And our time complexity is going to be constant because we are using a stack. But our space complexity will be big O of n, where n is the number of elements that we are adding into our stack. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And also, tell me what problems you guys want me to solve. I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.